Hello and welcome back to the Fish Locker Workshop. We're going to take some time now to talk to you about launching and retrieving a small boat single-handedly. This is how I do it. Other people might have a different process. This is how I find it easiest. When I first started out, and I'm sure this will be the case for a lot of other people, I found it easier when I wrote a checklist. And that's just a plan of how I was going to do things so I could follow it point by point so I didn't forget anything and I didn't come into any problems. One of the main things that I will say about this is preparation is key. The more time you spend preparing and getting things ready and planning, the less likely you are to have any problems further down the line. This is a basic checklist before I even leave the house. Boats on the trailer... First thing you want to do, I always do this the night before. I always get ready the night before because in the morning when I get up and I'm dead excited, you'll forget stuff. So I always get the boat ready, the trailer ready, my bag ready, my fishing gear ready, everything ready the night before. So I can just get straight out there in the morning, give everything a quick once over and then I'm away. But the first things, pre-use checks, check your trailer over. Check that there's no damage, check there's not something you haven't missed, check there's nothing loose or going to fall off or... Check the tyres on your trailer, not only for the condition, but the pressure. Your boat, on man, on my trailer, I have a primary retention for it, which is the winch that hooks onto it, and then I have a secondary retention cord, which hooks up to the same place. So if the winch should ever give, I've got a short length of rope with a carabiner on that clips on that holds it in place. That would be that if the winch ever gave while I was driving, it would only drop back an inch before the secondary retention held it. The trailer board. You must have a trailer board by law so that you can see your brake lights, your reversing lights, your indicator lights and your license plate. Make sure it's fully secured and make sure the lights work. Very simple way out to do that. Start your engine, put your hazards on. That shows you both your indicators. Then put your fog lights on. Show you both your brake lights. It takes seconds, but you need to check because there's no use having a trailer board on there if the wires aren't working right and it doesn't work. Make sure the boat's secure. I have a big ratchet strap that goes over my boat. All I do, give the boat a little bit of a shake, give the ratchet strap a little click to make sure it's tight so it's not wobbling around. Because although it won't fall off, any type of vibration causes damage. Rubbing or touching or something like that can cause a crack, can cause a rub. You want to be nice and tight and snug. Check that your engine's secure. Now, an outboard engine like mine, I trim it all the way up, run it all the way over to one side so it lays over, and it has what's called a transit pin. And all that is, is as the back of the board comes up, it has a little pin that you put out, and then you trim it down so it sits on it. So that it's not, it's not sitting on the ram as you're driving and it's vibrating, it sits on a pin called a transit pin. Some of them have a lever that you pull up like that and it sits on it. But you need to make sure that whatever yours has, it's in. The next thing, go inside your boat and have a look around. Make sure there's no loose items going to be rolling around. So when you're driving around corners, like your bucket full of leads aren't going to be sliding around inside your boat and smashing things up. And finally, the most important thing, make sure you have your boat keys. I'm guilty of this. I've, I've jumped straight in the van. I've trailed the boat all the way to the boat <laughs> to launch, and I've gone, oh Jesus! And my me boat keys are sat in the house, so I've had to trail her all the way back to the house to pick the keys up to trail her all the way back again, and I've lost two hours. There's nothing so frustrating as when it's your own fault as well, is it? So remember this whole checklist here. It doesn't take much time, but definitely. It will save you time when when problems happen down the line that you've remembered all of these things. This is, and then you go and have your journey. Now, what I do straight away is, um, I've got a lay-by that's about a quarter of a mile away from my house. So I do all these checks, and then I set off on my journey, and then I pull over in the lay-by. So I've only been driving for a minute, and I have one more quick look round, just to make sure that nothing's come loose, and nothing happens, or anything that I've missed. So I, although I check it, just when I'm leaving the house, I pull over just down the road and double check. And then I'll go on my merry way. And then when I get to when I get to where I'm gonna launch, whether it be a local slipway or whether or not I'm driving three hours to somewhere else, 
then when I get there and I get to the car park, I have another checklist before I launch. Right, you've trailered your boat to your launching site. You get yourself into the car park or wherever it is, not on the slipway. The slipway is for launching and retrieving. Prepping your boat for, for journeys or taking, it all, taking all the straps and stuff off, that's done in the car park or that's done somewhere else in a hard standing. That's not done on the slipway. Once you get there, I'll go through my next checklist. This is just before you're gonna launch it. So take the cover off the boat, take the ratchet strap off the boat, Definitely, definitely, make sure you take your trailer board off. A number of times I've seen it before where people will have an electric trailer board, straight on the back of the trailer, straight in the water, and the whole thing's knackered. Electrics and salt water don't mix very well. Engine transit pin. Right, the pin that you've had in for while you were driving, trim your engine back up, take your pin out, take your lever down, so that it can trim all the way down. The reason you do this now before you're in the water is because it's easier to reach when you can stand behind it and pull the pin out than leaning over in the water. To try. It's much easier to make sure it's done beforehand. And that way all you need to do is jump straight in your boat, you can trim your engine right down, start your engine and you can go. My boat has a, a self-draining deck. That just basically means that it's got a plug in the bottom. And all you do is you can pull the, pull the, pull the plug out, trim her up, steam off at high speed, and the water drains out of the deck. That also means that when the plug's out, when you're not going at high speed, water fills the boat. It does with mine anyway. And uh, yeah, I've done this a couple of times where I forgot to put the plug in, I've launched it down, and when I've come to get in it, there's a foot of water inside the boat. You look like a bit of an idiot, don't you? Make sure you've got the plug in if it's applicable. And also, um, the way that I launch, as I'm going to show you in the video in a moment, I use a piece, like a 15, 16 foot piece of rope, tie it onto the forward cleat and have it just looped, just up on the bow. These checks before you put it in the water. When you're coming to take it out of the water, once you've got it on the trailer and you're going to be taking it away, I would just use my same checklist as when I'm going to set off on my journey. So from my house, that's the same. just use the exact same checklist going from your launching site back home. You only really need them two checklists and I promise you it will save you a lot of time and heartache because you won't forget half as many things as, as you would have done if you were just doing it off your own memory. Right, we've got to where we're gonna launch. We're up in the car park. We're not gonna do this on the slipway. You've taken your cover off. You've taken your ratchet strap off. Very importantly, you've taken your trailer board off. And with my boat, my boat's got what's called a self-clearing deck, a self-draining deck, which basically just means it's got a plug in the bottom. Make sure you put the plug in before you put the boat in the water. Now, I've forgotten this a couple of times. I know other people have as well. You do a last, last walk round check. So you're just making sure that, one, the plug's in, two, the engine. What they have is they have a pin. This is like a transit pin. So I've trimmed it down onto there. So you trim it up, pull your pin out. This allows the engine to go all the way down. You see? You wanna keep your engine up, keep your transit pin out. Just because it's easier to reach here than when the boat's in the water and then you realize you can't get your engine down because you've still got your pin in. Once you've checked the boat over, all you need to do, make sure, is you have your little pulling rope. This is going to mean, this is going to make it so that you don't get your feet wet. You're ready, now it's time to put it in the water. in the water I only ever like to run my van till the back wheel is touching at the moment we've still got a flooding tide so it's going to rise a little bit up there depending how long you take 
You should only be minutes, but you never want to swamp your vehicle, so I always just put mine that far. Leave the engine running on the handbrake, that way if you need to pull it out the way real quick if something's gone wrong or you've forgotten something, you can drive straight out. Right, you've got your rope ready, it's attached to your forward plate. Because you're already in the water now, you can take off your secondary and you're just on the winch. So all you do is you take a little bit of tension, take the lock off and slowly back it away. This one, because I've got the Teflon rollers, I'll show you how easy this one runs away. So I can take that off and just literally pull the rope. And there it goes. And this is why you have the rope. Right, just come off the back of your trailer, you've still got all your rope. And all that would go. There you go, your boat's tied off, you're out of the way, get your van and your trailer out of the way. Take it right up into the car park, do not leave it on a slipway because all you're doing is you're blocking it from other people. When the people want, might want to get their boat out, they might want to launch it or get your boat, get your trailer and get your van back up into the car park, make sure your boat's safe and then you can take your, take your trailer away. Just pull alongside like that. This is what your short ends are perfect for. Take a nice place. Down on your cleats. Loop it through. And you just tie it off. That's going to sit there now. First thing you're going to do when you're going to trailer it out, engine off, turn the engine to one side, trim it up. It's terrible when you see someone forget to trim their engine up and they try and trailer it out. And as soon as you get it on the trailer, you just hear as they drag the engine up the, up the slipway. So. Huh? Trimmed all the way up now. If you look back here, a lot of engines have got like a little stop. Some have got a lever that the engine sits on, man's got a, just a pin that you push through, and all you'll do is you'll. There, it's sat against the pin now, so that won't move. All I use, a decent length, this will be five. 10, 15 feet. I just take a loop around my cleat, and this is going to sit there. Most of this is just preparation. All you're going to see me do now is I'll just bring my trailer straight round, trailer it down in the water, and then I can pull it straight on. One of the things that I see people do, and believe me it doesn't just wind me up it winds up everybody else is do not hog the slip your trailer and your van up in the car park all you want to do is get your boat straight on get it away from the slipway so other people can use it 
the same way when you're launching. Don't put your boat and your trailer all on the slipway and then start taking all the straps and the covers and everything off on the slip because it just stops other people using it. Do all that in the car park and then when it's ready to go in the water, straight in. I always like to position it, I never like to go any deeper than just the wheel, you can see the wheel there is in two inches of water. We've actually got another half an hour of the flood here, so I'm always careful, I mean when you've got an ebbing tide, you should never have to worry because the tide's not going to come up and swamp your engine. It's the same reason why I always leave man running, just because if I ever need to get in and, and start going or anything like that, it's always just safer. Trailers in the water there. But, like I said, this is all just about prepping. That's free, your secondary is free. Right, your engine's trimmed up, you're in neutral, you're all the way over to one side, you've got your rope ready. All you have to do, undo your short end, like that. Get all your rope and you just take the boat for a walk. Now none, none of this needs to be done very fast. All you're going to do is you're going to get yourself just opposite where the back of the trailer is. You're just going to give it a little shove off just so it's parallel to where your trailer is. This is why you need this much of rope. Because otherwise me. You'll be to come down there. Right. With me, as you can see, these white rollers are my centre rollers. You just need to line the boat up onto those and just ease it in. Once you have it as far as you can get it, tip on, lever up, and you just wind it up. See, I put my rope up out of the way so it's not going to get snagged anywhere and all I'm doing is I'm guiding this strap onto this winch so that it doesn't run down any of the sides and I'm just gently winding it on all the way up till we touch the buffer. I take my secondary and latch that on straight away there. That's it. You're now ready to get it out of the water. Don't wait on the slipway, don't pull it up a little bit, you want to get up out of the way so you're out of everybody else's way. It's held here and it's held here and it's not going to fall off the trailer.